Thank you for choosing Jefferson Health and the Department of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery for your medical care. This short video is intended to explain the basics of thyroid surgery and its risks and benefits. The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland that makes hormones and is located in the front of the neck, just over the windpipe. It has three main parts, a right lobe, a left lobe, and an isthmus in the center. Surgery to remove part or all of the thyroid may be recommended for a number of reasons, including a large nodule or goiter causing compression of the windpipe or esophagus, an overactive thyroid which is unable to be controlled with medications, a suspicious nodule for which cancer needs to be ruled out with surgery, or a cancerous nodule. When your surgeon removes a cancerous thyroid nodule, he or she may need to remove lymph nodes that are present around the thyroid gland. This is called a central neck dissection. There are a few terms generally used to describe the kind of surgery. Hemithyroidectomy, or thyroid lobectomy, means that only half of the thyroid is being removed. Isthmusectomy refers to the removal of the small middle portion of the thyroid gland and may be done alone or along with a thyroid lobectomy. Total thyroidectomy means that the entire thyroid gland is being removed. Subtotal thyroidectomy means that most but not all of the thyroid is being removed. Regardless of whether all or part of the thyroid is being removed, the traditional method of thyroid surgery uses a small incision in the low middle neck. The muscles in the front of the neck are open like curtains to reveal the thyroid gland which is just underneath. Generally, almost no muscle needs to be cut. This partially explains why thyroid surgery tends to be less painful than other kinds of surgery. Once the thyroid gland is exposed, the portion that is being removed will be separated from the surrounding tissue and all of the blood supply will be sealed. The parathyroid glands are four very small glands that control calcium in your body. They are often attached to the back side of the thyroid. During the process of removing the thyroid, the parathyroid glands are very carefully separated from the thyroid so that they stay in the neck. The nerves that move the vocal cords, called the recurrent laryngeal nerves, travel immediately behind the thyroid gland, one on the right and one on the left. Your surgeon will identify them and keep them safe during surgery. While you are under anesthesia, a specialized breathing tube is often used that helps monitor these nerves and help identify if there is stretch or trauma to them. There are additional nerves to the voice box, which help change the pitch of the voice. These are located just above the thyroid gland, but can still be stretched during surgery, especially with surgery for very large goiters. After the thyroid lobe, or whole gland, is removed, it is sent to the pathology lab where all of it will be inspected under a microscope to determine whether there is cancer or other pathology. The surgical area will then be inspected and closed up layer by layer. Each surgeon has a preference for the type of stitches and bandages used at the end of the procedure. It is important for informed consent to review all of the risks. All surgery has some risks involved. The risks specific to thyroid surgery are number one, Pain. This includes pain at the surgery site, sore muscles in the neck and back, and a sore throat. Usually all pain with thyroid surgery is mild and only takes a few days to resolve. Your surgeon will talk with you about any pain medication you may need after surgery. Number two, bleeding. A small amount of blood loss is expected during any open surgery. But this risk specifically refers to the very small chance of having either excessive bleeding during surgery or having a collection of blood that develops after surgery called a hematoma. Small hematomas may not require any intervention, but larger hematomas will often require going back under anesthesia and reopening the incision to clean out blood and find an open blood vessel. This occurs in 2% of patients or less. Number three, infection. Rates of infection for thyroid surgery are less than 1%. The skin is sterilized prior to surgery and only sterile tools and techniques are used. It is important to follow your surgeon's instructions for wound care after surgery to ensure that infection does not occur afterwards. Number four, scar. The traditional thyroidectomy technique will leave a small scar on the neck. For the majority of patients, this will fade and blend in nicely over time. 
but depending upon your skin and how you tend to scar, it may always be visible. Some patients will have difficulty with wound healing. This is more common for patients who are smokers and patients with uncontrolled diabetes, history of keloid, or hypertrophic scar formation. Number five, damage to the nerves of the voice box. As mentioned previously, these nerves are located very close behind the thyroid gland. Despite very careful techniques, they are at risk of being hurt during any thyroid surgery. They can be stretched, burned, or even cut. The risk of temporary weakness after thyroid surgery is less than 5%. The risk of a permanent weakness is less than 1%. Patients with weakness may notice a change in their voice or even difficulty with breathing or swallowing. Patients with vocal cord weakness may be candidates for further procedures to help their voice and swallowing. Number six, damage to the parathyroid glands. As mentioned previously, these tiny glands are in charge of calcium levels in the body and are carefully separated from the thyroid before it is removed but occasionally they may be stunned or damaged, causing them to not work properly after surgery. Rarely, they may also be removed. Because there are usually four glands, there is backup in case one or two of the glands are stunned or damaged. But low calcium levels after surgery may cause symptoms such as numbness, muscle cramping, and even heart arrhythmias. Usually low calcium levels are temporary and prevented with a few weeks of calcium supplement. But rarely, calcium levels that are low can be long lasting or even permanent. The incidence of permanent low parathyroid hormone requiring lifelong medication supplement is less than 1% after total thyroidectomy. The risk is a little higher, less than 5%, after removal of the lymph nodes in the central portion of the neck. As mentioned before, all surgery has some risk involved in it, and it is important for you to feel comfortable that the benefits of surgery outweigh the risks. Anatomy varies from person to person, and sometimes the disease makes surgery more difficult or risky. For example, patients on blood thinners or with very large goiters or overactive thyroid disease may have a higher bleeding risk. Patients with overactive thyroid, such as Graves' disease, may also have a slightly higher risk of having low parathyroid hormone levels and therefore low calcium after surgery, requiring supplements for longer. There are also risks associated with anesthesia. On the day of surgery, your anesthesiologist will discuss these risks in detail with you. Generally, the risks of thyroid surgery in the hands of high-volume thyroid surgeons remain extremely low, even for advanced or aggressive disease or difficult anatomy. Please make sure to ask your surgeon any questions you may still have after watching this video. Thank you again for choosing Jefferson Health and the Department of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. It is an honor to take care of you. We hope that this video has been informative and we welcome any questions you may have at this time.